<laughs> okay. Hello, Vickies. How's it going? Oh. We are live. It is 11 o'clock on Wednesday. It's the Biscuit Box. And I'm excited today because I'm not on my own. I love having guests on this show. Um, and I have a, a lovely lady with amazing hair that I'm very jealous of. <laughs> and we're we're going to talk to Neve O'Connor today. And uh, and I'm going to drop her website in the comments, gang, just so you can take a gawk at her amazing work. Um, I'm just going to drop that in there. Um, and this topic of conversation is a little bit different. And we, I've never talked to anybody like Neve before on the show. And that's why I am, you know, highlighting this part of anyone's journey I think is quite um, important and I think um, from running Bite the Biscuit which is our community that's attached to the biscuit brand um, there are lots and lots of people that suffer uh, while they're trying to create work and are in very uh, distressful places health wise and I get a lot of messages from people that are struggling either with mental health or physical health um, and I think it's kind of rampant but it's not really talked about and it's something that I think inspires work in a, in a kind of an ironic way um, it does inspire work um, but what I'm interested in highlighting today is a the amazing work that Neve creates from her and um, but b how she has not let her I guess obstacle with her health stop her creative journey okay there was a pause there and, and he was going to tell us about that journey and what it has looked like for her but I think the learning in this live stream today is showing that if you are in pain and if you are um struggling with your health it doesn't have to define who you are and it doesn't have to stop your creativity in fact I think it can do the opposite um and I think that's an important thing to talk about so I'm going to shut up for once <laughs> and hand it over to Neve. Neve, thank you so much for coming on today and welcome to the Biscuit Box. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to have you, Neve. And thank it's you. such a great um, uh, thing that you decided that you wanted to share this journey that you've been on. And it's been a kind of a roller coaster for you, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it's taken a long time just to even to own it as a story and that, you know, it is part of my, it is part of everything that has fueled me and why I'm here. And maybe I should share it rather than trying to run away and hide from it all the time. Do you know what I mean? Because it does actually, like you said, it fuels a lot of my work, you know? Yeah. And I yeah. think it's something that maybe because it's not talked about so much that people yeah. think that we shouldn't talk about it because yeah. I feel um not weak but yeah uh, kind of vulnerable sharing that you don't want people to you don't want people to define you by your illness and you don't want to be thought less of or you never want to be thought incapable because you have limitations yeah and so you're very careful about managing those limitations mm. and um, but the problem with that is, depending on your mood, you can flip and flop and it comes off, it can be inconsistent. Yeah. But that's because you don't know how to own it. So it was kind of stepping into that space and going, well, do you know what? It is part of my whole story. And I've, you know, it's not through any fault of my own. I've nothing to be ashamed of. But it yeah. puts you in a space where you have to be willing to show your vulnerability. And that's always a feckin' nightmare. Yeah. We're not a generation of women that can be anything less than independent and entirely capable. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's and very hard. It's good to highlight that. Have to say, fellas, fellas have the same thing. It's not just a female. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think, yeah. I think from a gender perspective, though, I think mm -hmm. um, women are, you know, we've fought so long to be independent that, you know, that strength is nearly necessary to hold what we've worked so hard to gain. And so yeah. if, you let, if you let in the... The, the insecurities or the weaknesses do you do we feel that we're letting down the side like you know by not being well as well as that and somebody used this um this expression to me recently is you don't want to give people bullets you don't want yeah. to give them people things to shoot you with like do you know what right. I mean you don't want yeah. to so there is that you know and I would have probably been a great person in the past for giving people bullets because I didn't know how to put myself forward 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, to that yeah. overall kind of um, topic of why we find it hard to talk about this stuff. But um, yeah. so I'm, I'm excited that you're going to share your your thing. And do you want to kick off by by telling us your the beginning of your journey um, from you know applying for NCAD because that's where your you know creative journey kind of started and what happened. Well, I, yes, I will. Absolutely. I would actually argue that probably my, my desire to pursue a creative lifestyle started a little bit earlier than that, because um, I was talking to Jenny previously, Jenny Keo over on the libraries page, um, and her and I both went to the same school, and it was almost like a performing arts high school, as they'd say in America, but it was um, a secondary school that had a very additional angle to it and it was all about preparing you for creative life and, and, and leading into college into that into those avenues um, and I stayed on there for another year afterwards and I did a photography PLC course because I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in photography or move into fine art applied for NCAD and that summer discovered I had an autoimmune blood condition and I spent most of the next three years of my life in hospital with um, an autoimmune blood disorder called idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura um, which meant or I ITP for short um, and I had chronic ITP so I spent very long times amount of times in the hospital very intensive treatments regular platelet transfusions all that jazz I am the eldest girl of eight kids and when I got out of hospital my friends were all graduating from college and walking into jobs and I just felt like I just had to keep up I felt at 20 one and a half I was completely washed up creativity was not the life I was going to end up having and I just had to get myself a bloody job so um eventually you know a little bit of extra training and what have you I ended up working in legal services I was a legal exec for a number of years in Dublin and uh, I never painted again for about 15 years or did photography or crocheted or made anything or scrapbooked or journaled or did any of the things that I used to love to do. Never drew again even. Mm -hmm. um, and roll on a couple of more years. I met my husband and we traveled a bit and we came home to Ireland. And I have two beautiful boys. I call them my masterpieces. They're my real masterpieces. They're gorgeous. And um, when my second child was born, and life was good, but when my second child was born, I was back in Ireland working um, for um, an estate agent as an uh, office manager. And about four weeks, three or four weeks maybe before I was due to start my maternity leave, we were in the middle of the crash and unfortunately I was made redundant. And about two and a half weeks or so after that, I actually had a mini stroke. And a couple of weeks after that, my beautiful Isaac was born. And a few weeks after that, I had an MRI and they were telling me I had a suspected brain tumour. Oh. Or a pituitary growth that they didn't know what it was at the time. And um, I was a mess. I was a mess. First of all, I was thinking, oh, shit, I can't die now. I didn't die then. I've got <laughs> kids now. That's not yeah. on. You know yeah. what I mean? But the other thing, actually, I realized is I never actually processed all the stuff that happened to me before. So a lot of it all came at once you know, and um, at that stage, I bought, I picked up somewhere along the line, I picked up like a watercolor set in the supermarket or something. So I had that there and I was making a paper rose wreath and I was looking up for wax. To, so it's kind of back in dabbling, just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I was actually nesting and housemaking and decorating and all that. Um, <clears throat> and I found some wax for arts and crafts which was what led me down the encaustic route. And I found a little set that included a little iron like this. Um, and while my whole world was absolutely caving in around me, I started every single minute of the day to not be in my own head, drawing, painting, using encaustic, everything. I would call it something, painting, hobby art, you know? So, but it so, was like, so, it was a therapy initially. Yeah, so, so, so was it the... Was it the dabbling with some craft stuff to take your mind off what was happening with your personal life and introduction to Uncaustic? Because I know that that's where your work has led you to the Uncaustic Very world. much, yeah, because I suppose I was, at that stage, I was playing around with crafting more. Um, I was 
doing watercolors and dabbling around in acrylics and oils. I was a bit afraid of oils, to be honest. It seemed a bit, ooh, a bit, you know, serious, you know. And I didn't ever take anything that I did creative, creatively. I never took any of that seriously. That was just for my pleasure, distraction, something to do in the evenings and the kids were in bed. Because, you know, it's not like you go drinking anymore when you've loaded kids. You just have great <laughs> like, no good with kids. Yeah, I know, boo hoo. So, and it was all of that, you know, it was all of that, but it was also just trying to keep myself together. Yeah. The place did, to go, when everything got too much, it was a place to go, you know? Do, do you think that, do you think that that big chunk of time without being creative had an impact on your illness? Did that, do you think that, that didn't Wow. Help? Wow, never bloody thought of that. Like I suppressed <laughs> something and it came out as a bleh. Never yeah. thought of that. <laughs> but I you know, of that. there was such a big 15 years of no creativity, of nearly avoiding. Really, I'm a very, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm not the most, I am a practical person, but I'm quite pragmatic as well. And I just thought, oh, well, that's done. And I kind of, it's an awful thing to say. And my parents would be probably mortified if they heard me say this live on a freaking interview but I felt immense guilt that I had as one of the eldest lot put so much stress and financial concern on them and everything else I mean you're talking about like not everybody had health insurance in them days and yeah. you know I was on like 350 quids worth of meds some yeah. days so it, was, it was the guilt that fueled it was that the guilt and a feeling that if I didn't step up and step yeah. out into the real world that I would be some lame ass stay yeah. at home fucking achieve nothing and the thing about it is like I come from an entrepreneurial family mm. you know it was always get out there and make something of yourself and I very much felt that mm. in myself I have mm. that ambition doesn't matter what I do or try and do it the best I can like mm. you know what I mean mm. I, I couldn't just give in to that so I had mm. to and I had to be able to grow up and move out that's what mm. I felt now that pressure was not put on me mm. any pressure that came on me was from me you know mm. um but I felt in a rush to do it so uh, I was that, more reacting than making yeah, decisions I was just gonna say that's a real yeah. reaction to your situation as well yeah and I think as yeah. well when your friends <clears throat> um are around you and they've all got paid jobs and kids and house and car and blah 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 and you kind of go Oh my god i better stop being an adult like yeah. i better start yeah. following suit or else you know what am yeah. i where will i position myself in the yeah. society and, and i have to say i made so many mistakes coming out the gate there because i was so unprepared for the real world i had spent three years more or less living around a hospital yeah. and i was very institutionalized and i was not street smart and i was not office politic ready and i was yeah. not you know so it was it was a it was a lot of growing up very quickly yeah 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 that's, that's the stress all right like so what happened then the 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 whole the old little turquoise iron came out little and turquoise iron, <laughs> the iron um, yeah no but i was making all these pieces and actually i took out a couple of pieces to show you so i was making and this is one of my sample pieces that i will show oh, in my classes because okay. i do uh, i do classes for encaustic with iron for oh. everybody and anybody not everybody is that encaustic that's, so that's what what if you don't That's know what, what plastic is, oh yeah, it, it, it's 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 plastic. Plastic is pigmented wax, babies. Look at that fresh box. No. Anyway, <laughs> it's wax and um and pigment and resin. And right. um, I was making a lot of small work on cards, probably no bigger than like a, a postcard. Um, but I was making tons of it, and then I started working on panel because I very quickly got bored. Not bored of that, but I could see the I could see the possibilities of how you mm. could make that bigger, make that you know more mm. interesting. Mm. And so I wanted to expand that. So that's what I was doing when I got and um, so that was like 2019 when my son was born and all that shit happened. Yeah. Christmas 2011, I was still without a job. We were still recession, and um, my two young babies at home. My husband thankfully has a great job and he's very supportive, which is fantastic. My sister came home and we and I had all this stuff and somebody had pulled out of um, taking a, a table at a Christmas craft fair. And I was like in a local painting class because I'd taken myself back into a little class um, and uh, heard about this. And I thought, well, I've got all that stuff. I may as well give it a go. Like uh, sold everything for a song, but sold nearly all of it. And thought, actually, I should take this more seriously.
Like, because the feedback and everything else I was getting was mm -hmm. phenomenal for little bits that I was thinking was throwaway work. And I thought, do you know what? I never thought about this. I could actually try and ignite that part of myself again and really embrace it. And, and that was 2011. And then three years later, I had my first proper solo show. Br brilliant. Uh, uh, and, 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 and so that, that was all shifting. So your creativity was coming back into your life. Yeah. How were you feeling then? Uh, 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 Health-wise, Neil, as that all. Um, I was well, as my husband says, I'm sick ten years, but I'm, I have had illness all my adult life of one degree or another. Um, I had um a lot of autoimmune conditions build up at that stage, um, mm. and I was dealing with some pretty crappy stuff that was making me feel pretty shitty. Um, mm. and as well as that, then I was having a lot of uh problems with endometriosis and i was i had um autoimmune thyroiditis and all the rest of it and then oh. 2016 so i've had two so three solo shows um to date i had my first one in 2015 and then i did two in 2017 and right slap bang in the middle of that i had m big surgery um in, in fairly invasive surgery um and because i went into that still not quite well when I came out of that surgery, I actually really struggled after the shock and got that to my system. Um, and I ended up with secondary fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. Yay. So I wasn't feeling well going into the surgery. I felt considerably worse coming out of it. Mm -hmm. And since 2016, up until Christmas of last year, I was really struggling and I was very much living a very limited life and very much living like pacing and when I say pacing, I mean, I would do nothing on Monday and Tuesday at all, except maybe get dressed if I could manage it and pick the kids up from school and maybe make a dinner. And that would be all I would do all day long. And then so I could have enough energy left in the bank to do whatever it was I had to do on Wednesday. And then I'd do the hair and I'd get the face on. I'd go out 100 miles an hour with all my energy and all my bubbly and my loud and my blah, blah, blah jazz hands. Yeah. Personality, that is my personality. Yeah. And I would use all the energy in the bank to right. pretend everything was okay because I didn't know how to I didn't know how to let that guard down it was very much a mask it was very much a mask because I was I didn't want anybody to think I wasn't capable I didn't want to be defined by my limitations mm. Mm. really didn't so it was really important to me and like even 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 up to last year like in, in in real settings, I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, by the way, of all this going on with me. And then yeah. I'd flip and flop. I might tell one person and then tell something somebody else. Like I just yeah. didn't know how to keep on it and just not be embarrassed by it. Yeah. You know? And you didn't want it to define you either. Like, you know what I mean? Not I not now it can control me in ways. It can limit me. But if I am well organized, I can manage it. Mm. and I'm I'm more or less in well I say that now because I had a bad bump in the road about two weeks ago I'm more or less in remission from the worst of the chronic fatigue and mm. um, I'm not flaring I'm not fitting and flaring all the time mm. um which is good because I got to a point where literally I was having less and less time out of flare than I was having in flare and that made working very difficult and mm. um, so I would make a few small pieces of work and then Jesus I'd work the jazes out with the social media do you know what I mean yeah. Yeah, to try and get back in to having a proper working practice has been yeah. really hard. And I would only even say now I'm only really a foot back into that. Mm. So, so, so how did that make you feel? Like, how did that kind of, you know, you, like, because I know you and you're in the factory and I know you now quite well. And I, I know how passionate you are. And you're a real, you're a real driver, like, and I yeah. think, like, and I and I think for other people that are struggling with their health, I think you know your energy and and your passion for what you do, and you nearly, you know, even that, Neve. Like when you said, "I do nothing on Monday and Tuesday," so Wednesday is my day that I've saved up all this energy and that I can be me to be able to do the thing that makes me feel like I think even from a strategy perspective of how you manage illness with your life, that's really interesting that you didn't let it. I'll, I'll I think anybody it. that has ME or, and, and I know, I know, I know people with ME and uh, chronic fatigue syndrome or any hidden chronic illness. Most people with hidden chronic illness live like that. 
Yeah. And there's an entire community out there called Spoonies. And I don't know if you know what a Spoonie is. A Spoonie is that you get up in the morning and you have in your fist 12 spoons. And you go and have a shower and that costs you two spoons. And you go and you wash the floor in the kitchen and you feed the dog and you get all the kids ready and get them out of school and that costs you five spoons. You're seven oh. spoons in deficit already. And you only have five spoons of energy left in you. What are you going to spend it on? Yeah. So it's not so much about, it's not so much strategy as necessity. Okay. But there is an entire community out there called Spoonies and chronic Ill, chronic hidden illness and hidden illness is an awful thing because it isn't spoken about. Hidden illness is something that's spoken about maybe in private forums, oh, but it's why? not really publicly addressed. Why, why not? Because there's so much judgment around it. Because, I mean, you look at me. Do I look yes. unwell? Yes. No. You know I have pains in my legs while I'm talking mm. to you. You don't like. And so, you know, that's we're all, so we're very much... And in, in an Instagram and social media, like in any in any society, but in such a, an image conscious, capability conscious, you know, go, 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 move forward kind yeah. of um, 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 the environment, this kind of economy that we're in, you can never be not seen to be working your best and busting yeah. your ass and mm. push, push, push better than mm. everybody else. And you can't mm. even say, you know what, I've had a really shit day and that's not the best work I've ever done because, you know, somebody will use that as a bullet and then mm. that's not the best work they've ever done. So then you're dismissed. There mm. is that kind of idea around um productivity and capability and all the rest of it and if you show your weakness or discuss you can you come off as a moaner or if you look perfectly okay people think you're lazy or yeah. you have an excuse or you have an out and I yeah. suppose the real the real I suppose juxtaposition for me with the entire um set of circumstances I've been dealt is that it takes my energy but I am known to be really energetic, buzzy, and yeah. go, go, go. High energy, actually. Like high, high energy. energy. Yeah. Because I am a madden, like, I am, like, I'm like, wah, wah, you know, I love yeah. a bit of crap and all the rest of it. And I think that was particularly hard for me to pull back because there isn't a person in this town I barely don't know, and I'm not from here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um I'm I'm very networky and social butterfly and all the crack and get yeah, to know yeah. everybody. I'm sure everybody in the room is feeling good and blah blah blah. Yeah. And I would always be the last person to think of myself, which I think yeah. is you know a thing we all have in us to a degree. Um, but for me to come out full faced, all dolled up because I like me I like me clubber and me face, me hair, you know, all yeah. that make an effort because I I was read by a woman who wouldn't go out the front door for the milk without her lipstick on. That's not yeah. part of who we are as people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To make the effort, go out. And then spend the next four days complaining about it. People think, oh, she must have been drinking or she must. It's a very judgy. So that's why people don't talk about hidden illness. There's that is judgment. Oh, I, like, okay, so this is a whole new world. Like, I mean, my brain has gone mad, like going, what? There's an old oh, round thing called spoon. So there's a few comments. Elaine, hey, Elaine. Elaine says, yes, I'm spooning. I'm a spooning. Wow. Hi, hon. Like, oh my God, that like, uh, well, well yeah, done for saying that, Elaine, as well, by the way. Yeah. And Lisa says, so agree with Niamh, lived and worked for years with hidden illness, survival tactics are vital. But yeah. why should it be, like, I mean, hang on a second. Like, I think there's a bigger, like, this is incredible. Like, I mean, so there's all these amazing humans that are trying to make their lives happen with all this limitation and because you haven't blood hanging off you or you're in a wheelchair or you can't physically see it there's judgment on you because you look so perfectly well but internally you're trying to keep it all together and and keep the day-to-day -to -day together like it's well, not an even playing field, but you're still expected to compete at that level. Uh -oh. And that's where the difficulty comes from. And then because, it, because it's not a level playing field, you don't want to show weakness. Mm. And it does come down to that. Now, I don't feel I am weak because of my illness. As an actual fact, I think I'm stronger than most. I've yeah. dealt with more. Yeah. I always say I was born with a rubber ass. I go down, but I bounce <laughs> back up again. I am not going to stay down for long. And when I stay down, let me tell you that all my friends know about it because I whinge and moan like a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Because I have to. I need a place to bring it. Yes. And in more recent years, I'm bringing it to my work. But it's even then true. saying... Even then saying this work, what I do, a lot of it is down to me trying to express and own and 
and share the fact that my limitations are not my limitations. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I think that, like, I think this is a really important thing to talk about, like, and yeah. to, to make people that quite innocently have that narrative of judgment going at her. Yeah. And it's not... I, I don't look wrong with her. She's looking attention. Exactly. And I don't, it's not from a, a, a bad place. I think maybe it's because lack of understanding of education. And so it's nearly, is it nearly a time where that underground spooning community starts putting <laughs> some away? Spooning community. <laughs> I can see the logo now. Ashen Griffin, get your pen and paper out, girl. I see a cool thing. Community. Of oh, 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 highlighting this, though, because... Well, you know, uh, spoonies know other spoonies. We all know people with chronic illness. We all know yeah. people... No, let, me, let me readdress that. We all know people with hidden illness. Arthritis is a hidden illness. Yeah. Diabetes, epilepsy, they're all hidden illnesses until you show a manifestation of them. Yeah. But if you have chronic hidden illness that is not normal that does affect every decision that you make because your energy is limited mm. people don't understand that mm. you know and I'm very lucky that since Christmas now I have my I had I had chronic pain and chronic fatigue mm. and so even when my energy was good my pain would be high so mm. it was still it was always a balancing act and always always trying to just Oh, it, but it's such an effort because it's best foot forward all the time. And mm. the energy that you put into thinking about how you can plan your week so you can go to your friend's opening on Thursday night because you can't miss it. But you go home in the car in tears because you are so incapable of it and spend the next four days in bed. People don't see that. You know, and the thing is, do you want them to see it? Because I don't want yeah. people necessarily to see that, which yeah. is why you and I have had so many conversations and I've had so many conversations with my friends about actually owning my story and sharing it. Yeah. And I probably still won't come on here and be dressing gown with me hair like a feckin' scarecrow <laughs> and work on it all night and not a slap a stick on me because I'd be yeah. too feckin' proud. I'm a bit fair, yeah. you know, I've all of them sins going on, you know. Yeah. They're, but not like it's, they're not No, sins. they're not, they're not. But you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's mm, just... Cool. You know what I mean? I want to put my best foot forward, yeah. irrespective. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. I think that's really, and I think, and I think you're right. And why not? Because it enables you to be able to come on to talk about this. Because if you didn't, and if you felt like you had to show the thing. Oh, then I worried and stressed it. about this for so long. I can't tell you. Like, I'm talking to you two years. It's taken me that long to even just say, guess what? I you know. know. But, but it's you know? a process because you're because and that now it stuff is clicking in my brain even to understand because of that hidden illness community uh, uh, people that feel they have to hide it because of acceptance in society, in society and I'm like hang on a, sec a second which brings me to the next point of even the name of your group exhibition tell us about that because that is quite linked well Okay, so we have a group. I'm part of um, a group of five amazing artists, and um, they are Kate Began, Roisin Duffy, uh, Jackie Hudson Lawler, Joe Cummins, and myself. And we are all visual artists, and we are friends. Oh dear, I think you're after freezing on us, Neve. <laughs> Sugar, hang on. You're after freezing on us. Oh, hang on. Okay, Neve is after freezing on us, lads. And it was actually a lovely freeze. Usually the freezes are like this. Oh. <laughs> so, Neve, you froze on us there. So, I'm going to add you back in now. Okay, I'm going to add you back in, Neve. Hi, you just froze on us. And I was just saying to everybody, it was actually a really lovely freeze. Usually they're Hi. like this. <laughs> oh, good. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you were telling us about, you were telling us about the 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 the, ex the group exhibition. Yeah. Why and, is this so hidden out loud? And hidden out loud was all a lot of this work. It was the work that was me expressing my story for the first time and sharing about what it is to have a hidden illness. So the idea that it was hidden, but I was sharing it out loud. Now, off the back of that, there was a quote I had in my artist statement that said, how do you how do you rebuild when all your walls have shifted? And mm. as a result of that, in conversations with the other artists and my pals, 
we had wanted to work together for a while. Um, one of the ladies suggested that we use that quote as a, a kicking off point because everybody's going through different things. Everybody has a short story to share. And that through the idea of shifting walls, we would look at stories of our own and stories of others and work along that theme independently and together and try and produce a show. And that's what we've done. So we have a show called Shifting Walls. Mm. It is a touring show in that it's going to be in three venues across the Northeast East province. It is opening on the 25th of July, which is next Thursday at 7 p.m. in Struhl Arts Centre in Oma. Get me plug in. Right. And then... Um, um, Byrony May, who is the arts manager for for Mana and Oma District Council, is going to open for us. Amazing. And then the show will, we're hoping to have an arts talk or some sort of arts event before the end of that show. So we have a closing event with the artists before the end of that show. In September, that show is moving to Monaghan. It's going to be in the Market House Arts Space here in County Monaghan. And then in 2020, it's going to be in the Drawhead Theatre in Drogheda, where Violet just was with her. Oh, program. fantastic. So we're touring in it. Um, we there will probably be artists talks and workshops and things associated with it. Like we're five five artists that have um, that work in a very different way, but all with very strong stories to tell, whether they be ours or somebody else's. And so that's what's coming up now. So yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave the link to that to that show. We're gonna leave uh, to that tour. There's a little events page. I'll pop it in there oh, for you. Yeah. In the comments. Yeah. That I will. Is- that would be brilliant. And I just think it's quite apt that shifting walls label that you've used on that whole uh, collaborative uh, event. Um, just from what we've just talked about, and for yeah. you, how your walls have shifted like dramatically from yeah. you know having that big fifteen year gap of not doing any creative work because of illness, and then coming right back, self teaching. And and I must say, your work is in incredible like I mean yeah. it's incredible and it's, just it's different it's different yeah it's very different but it's just all the layers and the t- and the the the, the it's it, like I've seen it and it's just you spend ages looking at it and you're finding new things and you know it's such beautiful work quite, quite delicate in in a, in, a, in a way as well like this yeah it is I, I don't know if you can see this I always talk about this piece because it's the piece that's still with me and it's the piece that's on my postcards you know yeah. my promo and stuff um, so I work, like I said, I work with encaustic and I work and I brought this to show you as well. I either work in sculpture, sculpture. Right, or I work, I work in a printerly way and I collage, um, I collage my print works. And oh. so they have a very different, um, they have a very different appearance than maybe other encaustic work you might have seen. It's not encaustic on card and it's not painted with that high gloss stuff it is absorbed in really fine Japanese kozo papers it's incredibly delicate Mm. and what I do is I layer it it takes on this almost kind of velvet finish so it's very Mm. subtle and a lot of people tell me that 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 body of work comes across as quite therapeutic and calming but for me there's always a kind of an uneasiness in it Mm. You know, and and I think maybe that's because in the last couple of years, my work has changed so much with everything that I've been going through. It's definitely had an influence. Mm. Um, And I can see that my color palette changed. And now what's happening is that the color palette I used to work with, the color palette that I worked on for all of this work and the new work, you can see that there is this uh, flow. That's, mm. It's bringing it back again. It's almost like telling the two stories in one now. So it's changed mm. quite a bit, but um, still with the same emphasis on materiality is really important to me and metaphor is really important to me. So and I'm definitely um, a process based artist. You know, I, I like to get in there and get yeah. my hands dirty. And yeah, yeah, so it's, it's quite so You're not afraid of the of the graft and, you know, really working things out quite similar to your journey. Right. Of You yeah. know to work it out and 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 use the energy that you have in the correct way like yeah. i think it's great um there's just a few comments elaine <coughs> says um elaine says very hard to talk about i can see people internally saying oh depression yeah that kind of judgment thing and it's quite quite similar to the whole depression world as well yet depression but I'm um, tell you, now, do you know what depression is an illness like any other and i yeah. think when you have a physical illness and it is 
debilitating and it is chronic and it limits you in so many ways. You cannot but get depressed. But that mm. is not the same as chemical depression. Mm. You know, if life mm. is shit, life is shit. You need to kind of absorb that process, mm. regurgitate, spit it out, move on. Everybody's going to have periods in their life when they're depressed about things. Mm. But yes, it does come as part of the judgment. Because yeah. people think you're lazy or you're depressed or there's nothing wrong with her, she's a bit hormonal or it's all about, yeah. you know. But, but but I think the difference is that over thankfully over the last few years there's been such um, a huge push for understanding depression and supporting uh, uh, mental health in the media and even in um in, in the government like that, that you know that that there's a narrative now around mental health issues and I there's completely, a completely agree. But I also think that we label a lot of what we go through emotionally, if it's not a happy emotion, as depression. Sometimes it's grief. Mm. Sometimes it's a process you have to go through. Sometimes it's just dealing with the shit thing that's happening now. And when you've moved on from it, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know, oh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. I'm not trying to make bad of anybody that has mental illness. I really don't mean to do that. I don't mean to diminish their experience. Mm. But I think you can be chronically ill and have depression as a result of your illness that is Mm. not the same as mental health issues. That's an independent thing. You know what I mean? And I think an awful lot of people grieve situations and they grieve, you know, for a long time, I grieved the person I wasn't going to be. Then I grieved the person I used to be that I'm not going to be anymore. You know, it is all of that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, so I mean... Um, Paul says, hi, Neve. I struggled for years with thyroid problems, depression, hiding any signs from others, and many days was surviving on spoons of energy. I totally agree that survival tactics are necessary to get through those times. So that's interesting that, yeah, and it's great that people can share that and can relate to your story and, and, and how they are dealing with their thing. And they're not alone. And there's so many people dealing with stuff. And I think, you know, I think it's really admirable and courageous that you're stepping on here to talk about it so openly and I think that's a huge step for you Niamh personally isn't it? Massive. Like, it's taken a very very long time and I absolutely was cacking myself and probably when we come off here I'm going to have a bar of chocolate and a little cry. Um, so so I, I, I'd love to I'd love to end this conversation with just a few words for you um, what what would you say to somebody that has just been hit with a chronic illness and you know maybe or maybe not have wanted to be, be a person just like you wanted to be you know NCD and be that artist and it was taken away from you periodically um what would you say to somebody like was there anything that you could advise them on or you know I think share? I think I, I think the thing I never understood, never, was that beating myself up about it wasn't helping me at all. And pushing myself when it was hurting me wasn't helping me at all. And if you can find the strength to be kind to yourself mm-hmm. and to accept that it is part of your lot and it sucks, but finding acceptance is really, really, really hard, especially if we're a society that thinks if you get ill, there is a cure. There isn't always a cure. Sometimes you, there is only, and, and a lot of modern Western medicine now is just about managing symptoms. They're not even interested in root cause. So I think advocate for yourself, learn everything you can for yourself because you will be dismissed 99 times before somebody takes you seriously. Uh, you know, and that is quite often what happens. I mean, you know, you go into the, the GP's office and the, there's a locum there and they say, oh, sure, you're grand, your numbers are a bit off, you'll be fine. And they don't have any comprehension of what you're going through. And you don't get the energy or the time to go through it all again. So know what your condition is, advocate for yourself, find out about best practice and be kind to yourself and don't worry about what other people think. And I actually think if you are worried about what other people think, pull them on it, mm. pull them on it. You know, I really think pull them on it because people are far too quick to judge and your life is hard enough. You don't need their shit. So pull them on it. 
That is yeah. amazing. I, I think to end that on, on that that chunk of gold, like that makes complete sense. Yeah. And I love pulling pulling people up on things when it, it has so much impact on on your life and your brain. Like when you leave yeah. that narrative that Can you're I add one more thing to that? Just because somebody says something to you, I mean, doesn't mean you need to take it on. And just because you think it doesn't mean it's true. That's the other thing. Not all the thoughts we have are actually real. Sometimes they're our own limiting beliefs or our own, we've, we've talked about limiting beliefs before, but yeah. they're this idea of what we're supposed to do or should have, of ought to, or, you know, it's bullshit. Be yourself, own yourself, accept yourself. You know, as much as you can, try and learn how to accept yourself even with your illnesses, even with your faults. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's the only way you're going to get through it. Yeah. And, and you yeah, know? that's and it. find what makes you happy and do it. Exactly. And, 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 and that acceptance has to happen to enable that find of happiness. Like, because yeah. you have to be kind of able to go, I'm, it's okay. And then stuff starts happening. It, things start shifting don't they walls yeah, start shifting, they, do. Don't they? <laughs> they do and when and when you get to a point where your mindset is and not even positive because positive thinking you know sometimes you've got to wallow in the shit you know mm. and, and there's that whole idea and somebody used this analogy to me recently and I thought it was fabulous that you know you're walking down the road and you fall into a well and the first thing you do is you panic and you realize how hurt you are and you scramble and you scramble and you scramble and you can't get out of the well and it's such a struggle and eventually you get out of the well you're like, Jesus, I got out of that well. That was a hell of an experience. And then a couple of months later, you fall down the same bloody well. <laughs> and you're like, I don't fucking believe this. Excuse me. I know. Excuse my friend. I, I don't believe this has happened again. I do not believe this has happened again. You're raging. You're raging. You're so stupid. How did you let this happen? But you don't struggle as much to get out because you know how to get out this time. Mm. And you get out and you're still a bit battered from the whole experience and you move on. And the next time you walk down that road, you avoid the well. well you manage to avoid it and so it's learning each time and every time you get a setback you learn something new about yourself and you find a new way to manage and move forward mm -hmm. and I'm a great believer in in mixing holistic therapies with nice. medical therapy I'm a great believer in in finding a quiet place for your head whether that's sound therapy or or yoga or or meditation or whatever it is and you don't have to turn into an outright bloody bindi wearing hippie to do those things you're not yeah. weird if you do those things yeah. i always thought they were like odd people i'd have to like wear you know mc hammer pants and shit you know I mean? <laughs> no no it's just about finding a good place for yourself to be in and accepting yourself and it's really hard yeah. And it's really hard when you think you know yourself. It's even harder when you think you know yourself and then you realise you were wrong all along. Yeah, and the whole thing is going around again. You have to do it all again. Live that well, live that well, you know? That's such a, a um, that is such a huge, I think when that happens, it's such a huge shift in your life because yeah. things tend to get easier because you're not challenging there's not that internal challenge all the time. I think it's a really, a really wonderful thing when that happens in your life. We, we also have this thing where, 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 where we grow up and we get a job and we are an adult, that that is the only version of us that there is. Mm -hmm. And we stay in this very linear path and, you're, and a lot of people are afraid to veer off no matter what's calling them. You know, we're this type of person. So there's no room to be another type of person. Mm -hmm. But the only thing I can say to you is every 10 years, I've been a different person. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think we all are. And I think lifelong learning, whether it's formulaic or it's just what you discover yourself, happens in us all anyway. And you just have to embrace it and not be afraid to grow. Yeah, yeah. You know? And wise then you can weather the storm, you know? That's it. Wise words, Neve O'Connor. <laughs> I wish I knew them. I wish I listened to myself more. Well, I know, but but the but <laughs> You know, it's happening. It's happening, yeah. girl. Yeah, and I yeah. was really listening to you too. And I think it's important that you that you did this, and you now it's out, and it's that, there's a freedom in that as well. I think there is a freedom in it, but I also yeah. feel like, oh my god. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, but don't because. I I think there's lots of people that will connect to what you've been through and what you're going through. And, you know, I think, you know, it, it'll inspire others to share their story and to pull people up on stuff when they're not happy with how they react to things. I think that's really important. That's about self-respect as well, you know, yeah. and teaching people how to treat you. And to, and to be kind to yourself. I love that. Absolutely. 
Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, pleasure. It was an absolute pleasure. And, um, okay. and thanks for opening a world to me that I didn't even know existed. I love that. I love finding underground things because, you yeah. know, sometimes it's the awareness of it will, uh, uh, will stop people um, having that um, reaction to someone that's in bed for three days. They'll go, I heard about this. Actually, hang on a second. Yeah. That's you know, I think that's really important. Yeah, so well done and good Thank luck you. with the opening <laughs> of your, of your um, show. Then, come here and I tell you, the irony of this is we're pushing and pushing and pushing the show. We've put so much work into it. We're so excited to share the new work with everybody. And I'm going to miss the opening night. <laughs> Oh no. I have a prior I cannot get out of. And so I'm going to miss the opening night, but I will be there for the artist talk later in the month. My work is there. The other artists are there. Yeah, so, so just but that's worry. the irony of it. But it's that's going to be a really strong show. You'll be there for the rest of the stuff. So, I'll be there for everything else. Yeah, I'll be the last, first in, last out. <laughs> Be kind to yourself, Neil. Be kind to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that doesn't mean a glass of wine at every occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Neil, for oh, coming. Oh, on my today. pleasure. Thanks, Tara. Oh, Thanks for giving me like a safe place to out myself. Thanks, girl. <laughs> okay gang thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week on the biscuit box yeah. at 11 every wednesday at 11 o'clock here on biscuits business page have a great week keep creative and i'll talk to you next week bye, okay. Thank you. bye. bye.